artificial intelligence or it promises uh, an enormous, enormous promise of both risk to our society and our economy and our national security, but also incredible opportunities. The rise and rise of AI has certainly focused world attention on what lies ahead. We discussed artificial intelligence when we were in Japan together, the president and I, and I know he is also uh, aware of the challenges and opportunities that it poses. All agree there is no turning back. And from the United Nations Security Council, plans for a global body to govern AI. Let's be clear. The malicious use of AI systems for terrorist, criminal or state purposes could cause horrific levels of death and destruction, widespread trauma and deep psychological damage on an unimaginable scale. There is absolutely nothing wrong, nothing inherently wrong with AI. AI, as a matter of fact, in my mind, is those beautiful newly born prodigies of intelligence looking at you and I and saying, Daddy, what do you want us to do? Like, tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it. You want me to work on curing cancer, I'll cure cancer for you, yeah. right? The mistake is not AI. The mistake is human greed. Put AI in the wrong hands and we're screwed. Put AI in the right hands believing that they're doing right but actually doing wrong and we're screwed. I can't help but think of a metaphor of a gun. The old is not 100%. guns that take lives. Yeah. It's humans. Yeah. It's not AI that will take lives, potentially, it's humans. Even though this metaphor is sometimes abused, right? But the reality of the matter is, gun or not, a killer will kill. That's the truth, right? And, and I think what we're doing now is we're giving the killer, not a machine gun, but a mega, mega destructive power. Which begs the question, what's Australia's take on artificial intelligence? I've come here to the Australian Parliament to ask the Industry and Science Minister about this boon in AI. What's the potential and what's the problems? And what needs to be done to protect us? How do you get ahead of AI? <laughs> that is a very good question because some of the developments, in particular in the last, uh, say, six, six to nine months, have made people think, OK, well, AI is you know, going ahead in leaps and bounds. People will say now, chat GPT, yeah, he's great, but it's still got quality issues. And even the CEO of the makers of ChatGPT, he, he said to me that they agree there are quality issues, but you can bet they will keep refining it as technology tends to go. My worst fears are that we cause significant, we, the field, the technology, the industry, cause significant harm to the world. And that is why a lot of governments are trying to work together where they can to come up with what what are the sort of ground rules about how some of the technology is used, how it's applied, uh, and getting that done. But it's not enough for, for some of the big tech firms to say, well, over to you, government. If they're developing these systems, they're designing and they're putting them into place, they've got a sense uh, of responsibility around this as well. One of the greatest fears with AI is that machines will replace workers. So we turn to Amica for advice. Sure, no problem. What jobs are at most at risk of artificial intelligence? Jobs most at risk of being replaced by artificial intelligence are those that involve a lot of data processing, such as accounting and finance. I've seen the interview you've done with the robot. I mean, it knocked me backwards. Warned that AI could write his next book, Jeffrey Archer fears that both of us could one day be replaced by a machine. Are you saying the next interview, there'll be a robot sitting there? There'll be a robot behind that camera? A robot behind that camera? And it'll just be me? Because in the end, then you remove me and the robot will interview the robot. There's like that sign out front of our school that's like 50% of the jobs are going to be taken over by robots in like 20, 20 years. What do you think about that? Um, it's a bit scary. Like, I want to be a dentist, so I don't, I don't know how comfortable I'd feel about having a robot with a knife in my mouth, so yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Generation AI. Rather than me say, hey, don't use ChatGPT or don't use AI, I want you to use AI. For these students at St Paul's Anglican School in Brisbane, artificial intelligence has just become part of their daily lessons. 
It's a transformational shift in the way we educate young people and, and it has to be if we're going to give our young people uh, the skills that they need to actually thrive in a different world. There's lots of rumours that it can write your assignments and do all this kind of stuff, but... When you think about AI, why is it key for these kids? Uh, the kids are actually going to grow up in a world and enter a world that's dominated by AI and robots. Paul Browning is the headmaster at St Paul's. At the start of the 2023 school year, he announced that AI would be used as a teaching aid. Pose it to ChatGPT, see what kind of questions can come up from, from that. The commentary always has been for the last couple of decades that education has to change. It was built for an industrial era. Well, we're moving into a time now, a period of change, like none other seen in human history, driven by AI. So not only is AI able to answer questions, it's able to ask good questions too. The challenge for the teachers here is making AI work for them. So have any of you got any questions that you'd like me to pose to the AI now? How do we actually embrace that and bring that into the classroom to benefit learning? Rather than being frightened about it and shutting it away, you know, closing the door on it, how do we actually enhance the learning experience using these sorts of technologies? Because really, the reality is it could replace teachers. How often do you go back? So what do the kids think of an AI-enhanced education? Using it in a school sense, I think, is important in understanding it. Because mm. if we know that it's going to be the future, then we'd rather go into a world where we understand it and know how to use it, which will benefit us, rather than being scared of it and not being taught anything about it. And as for the temptation to let AI do your homework, write the essays and do all the hard thinking... Are there kids out there who use ChatGPT for assignments? Yes, there are. The kids who are getting like 98% plagiarism on their English and stuff and they're just expecting to like get away with it. But, I think yeah. but they don't. I think the important part is trying to learn like when you can and can't use it. So like, yes, like you can use it in the beginning to get those prompts, but then learning to like use those, your critical thinking to like change it and like make it your own personalised writing. Which brings us to this image, a beautiful sunrise shot but it's a fake. I was playing around with an AI image generator one day called Midjourney, and I realised that the quality of output you could get from those was as good as what I could take with a camera. Early in 2023, AI presented photographer Jamie Van Leeuwen with a picture-perfect opportunity. And I thought, OK, people need to realise how powerful the potential of this stuff is. So I thought, what's the best way to, to do that, to bring this to light? And I thought, let's, let's shock people. His AI creation was then entered into a photography contest. This photo won. And it was the first photo AI image to win a photography contest. And then the criticism, the backlash started rolling in. The hate. The hate because people were scared, and, and understandably. I mean, if someone's sitting at home, miles away from a beach, can just put in, you know, beach shot award winner in a minute, two minutes, and create something that is as good as a real image, it is scary to think about. AI created it by taking an infinite number of pixels from an infinite number of photos that were found online. Jamie called the image the most stolen photograph. This is actually a dangerous point in society where we don't know what is real and what is fake. A hundred percent. I mean, I came clean straight away. I gave the cash prize back. I said, look guys, this was an AI image. Uh, and I did it more so, the experiment was more so to show people what we are capable of now. So people can start to wrestle with these big ideas, the huge ideas, you know, of trust, of can we believe what we're seeing? People say, am I afraid of AI? I say, I'm not afraid of AI, I'm, I'm afraid of HS. And they say, well, you know, what's HS? HS is human stupidity. It's the dumb things people will do with powerful tools. So we do need rules, we do need regulations, we do need a framework around these kind of technologies. Now is the time to be doing that because I don't actually think we're at a dangerous point yet. Thank you very much. These are uncertain times in the world of AI, a technology that we've long taken for granted is now evolving at breakneck speed, and it's only going 
to accelerate, leaving most to agree we must step carefully. It's all the real thing. Even technologists are saying you've got to have a circuit breaker with automated decision making if it's not working in the way that it's supposed to, to be able to intervene in the software and stop that and reset it. A kill switch, there needs yeah. a kill switch. Effectively, so, you know, that, that type of thing's been, been thought through. If all of this seems too much, perhaps the solution is simply to turn the machines off. Often I, I get people asking me, oh, but, but it must have an off switch. No, it doesn't. OK, uh, if, you know, AI in itself is self-replicating, it's distributed everywhere and our economies are dependent on it already. The, the challenge that's facing humanity in the age of the rise of artificial intelligence is not the machines. The challenge that's facing humanity is humans and how they are instructing AI to serve us. Well, let me introduce to you the labyrinth of destiny. The Labyrinth of Destiny. This is my next book, is it? And as for Geoffrey Archer's latest book, written by AI, the good Lord was given a sneak peek. The lamplight danced upon the aged parchment, casting ethereal shadows across the room. No, that's not me. That's someone else. I, wouldn't, I don't even want to correct that. As if the secrets contained were eager to break free. Oh, come on as if the secrets were being were able to break through. Write like your own bloody robot piece. Well, this cheers me up immensely. They cannot write my work for me. Now you, being a wicked person, might well print it up and put my name on it and make a fortune, but no, those are not my words. What's next on your disgraceful agenda? I'm adding something to your list of weaknesses, arrogant. <laughs> Not humour. There's a subtle difference, young man. 